All right, so uh, good afternoon, good early evening. Today we're going to be looking at royalties in music. This is always an area that confuses people and I'm going to try my best to explain it in the most simplest way because it can be quite complicated. So what I want to ask you to do is slow me down or stop me if there's anything you don't understand because it can be a little bit confusing, yeah? All right, so royalties and music. All right, so what are music royalties? So they are the payments that musicians and music publishers receive every quarter. So a quarter is three months. It means a quarter of a year from the music that has been released and played in public. All right. So here in the UK, there are companies that collect music royalties on behalf of musicians or music publishers. So the main three are PRS, Performance Rights Society, and they collect on behalf of songwriters, composers, and publishers. So I will explain publishers and how all that works. MCPS do the same. Uh, I'll, I'll explain the difference with the MCPS as well. And PPO, they collect on behalf of performers, record companies, and owners of masters. So let me explain. Remember when we spoke about the different roles in the agency, in the uh, music industry, beg your pardon? Mm -hmm. It's not always that the recording artist slash performer is going to be a songwriter. Sometimes they may be different people. Yeah. So in that particular scenario, um, let's say that you're a, a recording artist and you haven't written your songs, you are still uh, due to get some, some royalties via PPL for performing on the song and performing in public as well, yeah? Um, and then record companies as well, because a lot of the time they own the masters and the masters means wherever you recorded it, if you've paid for a studio session earlier, a, a commercial studio, you own the masters. If a record company's paid on your behalf or someone sponsored you in a studio, technically they own the masters and they can claim PPO. See, it's starting to get confusing already and we haven't even got in. Okay, here we go. So before we get to here, take a deep breath because <laughs> here's where it gets a little bit tricky. So how do I move this? No, didn't want to do that. Okay, it's done anyway. That thing is obscuring my vision and I've lost my pointer. Any which way. Okay, so let's take a look at this and let's not be overwhelmed. So once again, we're going to start at the left. I wish I had my pointer, it would help. We're going to start at the left, just under the title of royalties in music. So we have different people or companies uh, who can actually receive royalties, payouts, uh, monetary payouts. You have the performer, you have the songwriter, sometimes the same person, not always the same person. You have the composer, producer, you have the record company and the owner of the masters, right? So what we'll do is we're going to go, we're going to take the journey of how the music goes out and then how the money comes back in, yeah? Mm -hmm. So from all of those people, you're going to produce a song or some of those people, you'll produce a song. That song is a music asset. So we're talking business terms now. An asset is something that is, it gives you something positive back. So in this particular context, a song asset means is that it's going to bring you back money in or it's going to bring back opportunities positive. It's an asset, yeah? Mm -hmm. So the song is the music asset goes up. Now, here's where it starts to get tricky. You can actually bypass having a music publisher and you can sign direct to the collection agencies. So I don't know if you can see, oh, where is my pointer gone? I don't know if you can see the arrows that go kind of weird. They kind of go down from song and across straight to the collection societies. And then you've got arrows that go from the song to the music publisher. Yeah. So, um, right, okay, how am I going to do this? Let's go the traditional route. So if you go through the music publisher, mm -hmm. the music publisher now will, on your behalf, make sure that all of your songs are recorded properly, the administration side of it, which is very long, I can tell you, because I don't have a music publisher. I go direct from my music to the uh, collection agencies. They're going to do that work for you, yeah? And not only are they going to do that work for you, they're going to try to ensure that they get your music into places that you can't get your music into. So if you look at music publisher and you see the arrow going down mm -hmm. and across, mm -hmm. it's basically indicating that music publishers are going to have access to get your music into certain venues, 
get you maybe performances in certain venues that pay out royalties. Mm -hmm. In public spaces, this could be at a community center such as Keys House, for example. Broadcasting, so radio. So, you know, on certain radio stations, big commercial radio stations, you can earn money for royalties from being played on radio. Films is another big thing. Advertising is another big thing. Now, most um, independent artists, and if you're an independent artist, you probably would be without a music publisher. They're going to struggle to get their music into those certain places because some of those, a lot of those places are corporations and companies, and they only want to deal with other corporations and companies such as music publishers. They don't want to deal with individuals. Yeah. So there are benefits to having a music publisher. A lot of music publishers as well, and I think I'm going to say this in, when we get to another screen, a lot of music publishers will give you a advance. So let's say you as an artist, you start re releasing songs, you don't have a music publisher, but you start getting a buzz. People are starting to say, oh my gosh, Aaliyah Johnson, she's amazing. When you come into my town, it's amazing. And they can clearly see that you're, they're, you're onto something, you're building yourself a fan base, and you are going to be able to draw down some money. They're going to get in contact with you and they say, listen, we like what you're doing. We, are, we, we, we publish for this artist, that artist, that artist. We've helped to get them to this stage, stage of their career. We'd like to offer you a publishing deal. And they'll say, we'll give you five, 5,000 pounds to go and record your next album or 10,000 pounds to go and record your next album. And you sign to us for three years and whatever. Da, 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 da. So it almost, it kind of sometimes operates like a record company. I'm not going to go too deep into it. But there are benefits and there are definitely disadvantages to having a music publisher. So I've been speaking very fast. Is there any questions thus far? No, I think I'm, I, I'm, I'm understanding the music publisher, like what they do and like right. how they help us about that, yeah. Okay. And as I said, you can go directly to, uh, to uh, Connection Societies. From my understanding, PRS is... I, I joined a long time ago, but I believe it's a hundred pound joining fee. I know MCPS is a hundred pound joining fee. I know that for sure. And that's one, once in a lifetime. PPL is free to join. So there's, there's no reason that anybody else, should, anybody shouldn't be on PPL. There's also something called VPL, which is for video royalties. I don't know if I go into this in that, but I also don't want to confuse that at the moment. Yeah. So these are very accessible. You can literally type in music collection royalties, or you can type in PRS for music, which is an umbrella which MCPS comes under. Once again, I, I can imagine how confusing this sounds. Right, so um, there is a slight possibility that you can get, if you have networks, you can get your songs into film and into advertising. You gotta get that? That shouldn't be that Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, you, you've got to, uh, so, so you, there's a very small possibility that you can get yourself into these places, for example, if you get your song played on EastEnders, on BBC, that's quite big royalties that you're due to get. You know, I'll give you a minute. Sorry. Okay, I'm here. All good? Yeah. All right. So yeah, as I was saying, if you are able to and you can get those connections uh, and you're able to get your song into films or programs or, adver or to advertising companies, or direct to radio, which is, it, it can be challenging, then what that means essentially is that, and you, and you register your own stuff, that means that you're going to be collecting most of your royalties. Mm -hmm. Standard percentage that a music publisher takes straight off is 50%. Oh, straight away 50%. That leaves a 50% remainder split for the composer, the songwriter, whoever else, yeah? Oh, so... Um, yeah, depending on, on, on where you're going, you might you may not want to do that. So have I in some way explained the benefits and disadvantages of having a music publisher and going going at it yourself? Yeah. Any question? I think it's just for me just under I think it's just putting it all together. I'll be fine, it'll all click. But I, like you've given all the good the points. You, you won't you won't get it straight away to be honest. Um it takes time and it takes practice and doing to really understand it yeah. um, but as I said all of these videos that we're doing will be on YouTube Keys House YouTube so you can watch it back at your leisure yeah you know you can get in contact with me and, and, and ask these questions so we understand the flow of the musical asset as it goes out into that atmosphere stratosphere the ether of music and entertainment 
So how does the money actually be generated and how does it get paid? So if we now look at our key, the orange uh, arrows are indicating the money flow. So these collection agencies, the PRS, MCPS, and PPL, they charge an annual license to the music venues, mm -hmm. broadcasters, radios, films, advertising. There's, there's a license that needs to be paid. Um, now, without getting too deep, film and advertising, they have different li licensing. They have what's called sync or synchronization licensing, which is a different thing, which we're not going to touch today. But for the most part, broadcasting on radio and public venues and spaces normally pay an annual fee. Keys House pays an annual fee to PRS and MCPS. And from that money, they take that, depending on how many times it's been played, they will take that, they will calculate that, they will give you a breakdown and they will pay out what's called dividends or uh, quarterly payouts. Yeah. Once again, the flow can be straight from the collection agencies to you if you've registered without the music publisher or they can be paid to the music publisher at which point, here's the tricky bit, at which point the music publisher will take the 50% straight away yeah. and then give you the other 25%. Okay. Or they won't give you any royalties until they have recouped all £5,000 of the advance that they've given you. And then when they start making profit, they'll start distributing royalties to you. So there's two ways that music publishers do it. Right. You with me? I'll watch it back. I'm definitely right. going to this, this is the hardest part of today anyway, yeah? So I think, I think if I'm right, I can't remember. I think I just go into explaining what did I just do? That wasn't meant to happen. That definitely wasn't meant to happen. Where have you gone? Um, here we go. So I'm just, it's, I'm really going to reiterate what I was talking about, your options, yeah? Yeah. So what if I decide to self-publish? So this is publishing without a, a, a music publisher, which is what I do. Yeah. Now, this will be more work as you will be solely responsible for registering each song the correct way, which is time consuming. I can tell you that from experience. However, you will retain all or most of the royalties. So this may work out better for you. So each situation you need to understand. There are costs involved with joining the collection agencies. Why is it doing that? Why is it doing that? Oh, see, it's, 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 it skipped something. All right, apologies for that. So rewind and come again. So what does the music publisher actually do? It reg they register songs with a collection agency. They try to get songs placed in places to make money because they've got a vested interest. Most times they provide a money advance to artists and they collect royalties and allocate percentage entitlements, yeah? So, do you need a music publisher? Pros and cons of having a music publisher. Pros, you may get a money advance. Now, if you're a struggling artist like most of us are, and you have a day job, and a publisher or a company comes, out, comes along and they recognize your musical talent, they say, we want to give you 20,000 pounds or 30,000 pounds or 10,000 pounds or whatever to record this album. And you know that that money can last you for a year or six months you can leave your job and you can put 100% into music and you can make sure that money, you can make more money, more money, and then you're free. You're free like a bird in the tree because you do music. So here's where it gets tricky. So you get, you get a money advance, but it's an advance as in it's a loan. Yes. Very few times that they just give you the money and you don't have to pay it back. Okay, so pros. Uh, faster growth from music placements. Now, if you are with a good and recognized music publisher, it will or they will get your music into high places and that will start a cascading effect of your name becoming bigger and more opportunities coming where you can make money. Does that make sense? So, you know, like Warner Brothers publishing, like one of the biggest, like if you're with a big one, there's pros and cons to that as well because if you're, if you're, if you're, you're a small fish in a big pond, there's a lot more artists that they're going to be working with. They won't pay you as much attention. But based on the name and the branding, it can get you further. You can leverage that. Yeah. So as I said, recognition within the music industry. So to this day, being signed to a music publisher does give you validation in the industry. It really does. Um, it shouldn't, but it does give you validation. Reason being is as simple. Corporations or companies would rather deal with other companies than individuals. It's quicker 
it's easier. A music publisher may be pu publishing for 200 artists. Imagine the, uh, um, imagine the PRS and the MCPS having to deal with those 200 individually instead of just doing the one music publisher who knows how to do things, fill out their forms correctly. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So this becomes uh, a challenge, okay? Um, and then songs formally registered for commercial release, yeah, which is important. Now the cons, the money advance is a loan. What this means is if for whatever reason, the worst case scenario, your music doesn't do as well as you had hoped it does, it doesn't get paid as much and the uh, music publisher does not recoup their advance, yeah. you are still legally liable to pay the rest of that money back, which is normally thousands and thousands of pounds. So there have been um, times where many, many artists have gone into the music industry. Yeah. It could have been, could have been a record deal or a music publishing deal. Signed it, everything. They had such a huge buzz. It hasn't done well. And they've left the music industry in debt. And they still haven't got a music career. So they've come out worse than they went in. And they got a bit of taste in their mouth. So, you know, the, the business can be horrible and it's yeah. a risk that you take, but, um, you know, some, for some people it, it works out. Yeah. And another big con is the royalties will, will be split with your music publisher. They're taking 50%, straight off the bat, 50%. And depending on the deal you have, sometimes that other 50%, you don't get until they recoup their money. Or sometimes they say, all right, you know what? Straight, straight away, we'll start paying you royalties, but we still get our 50% and stuff. And at some point, we're going to come collect all that money. All right, so we've gone over this. If you decide to self-publish, it's going to be more work, um, but you'll retain most of, your, most of all your royalties, and there are costs that you, you'll have to pay the cost of joining the agencies, which is a one-off cost, and in the grand scheme of things, if you're serious, it's not that much. And that's it. Do you have any questions? I hope you do, because I said a lot. <laughs> you're right, you did say a lot. I think the most confusing thing yeah. is the like the music publishers and stuff like that. And right. I think it's just the actually understanding what the best decision. Do you know this? Yeah, this whole page was the most confusing. Sorry, I what I what I did was I went I went online and I saw what they had and it was equally as a, as confusing if not more. I tried yeah. to simplify it and that's the simplest way I could do it. Yeah, no, but, it makes sense. I think it's just clicking it like putting it all together. If you know yeah, what I mean. Because it's going to take time, as I said, it's going to take time, and um, right now it's just a, just planting the seed, so you have an idea. So mm -hmm. not just you, whoever watches this, who's interested in music. What normally happens a lot of the time is musicians get robbed. Unfortunately, they get robbed because they don't take time to understand the business aspects of it. Mm -hmm. And a big way they normally get robbed is what's called on the back end, which is what yeah. we're talking about here. It's the music publishing. Once everything's gone out, you may have your advance and everything, and you get your show money. Once the songs are out there, how do you maintain an actual uh, standard of living? You have to have regular money coming in. That's right. your publishing. That's yeah. the thing, and this is what we're talking about. So this is so important for artists to take seriously. Even if they sign to a music publisher, they should understand the ins and outs of what's happening and how the system works. You yeah. know? Um, so once again, the song goes out, and it's the musical asset. That's what's going to bring back in the money. Hopefully it does well. That can either go directly to the collection agencies, or it can go via the music publisher. Mm. Benefits of the music publisher is they're going to make sure they do the administrative side properly and everything's filled out correctly. So you get everything you're supposed to be getting. And the real benefit is they're supposed to get that music placed in places that you couldn't get it placed in. That's yeah. going to bring in more money. Disadvantages is they're going to want that advance back and from that advance, um, they may not pay out any royalties until they've recouped all that advance. Even if they haven't recouped it, you're still going to be legally liable for that. And when you get your royalties, your 50% pretty much for however long that contract is, continues to go to that music publisher. So um, they, they normally, they see it as an investment, you know, as a musical asset. They, sees it in the rest, uh, they see it as an investment and they understand this particular artist has a lot of interest in them and, they, they, and I can see them being big and I can see where I can place their music to get them further and I can continue to make money off of them. Yeah. Yeah. So that so the music publishing game is still today, even with the digital music, uh, digital streaming side of it, it's still a good business to be in. Yeah. yeah. 
but this this is this is rather confusing and i can i can appreciate that once again depending on who you are depends on the amount of percentage you want to claim right so for example me as a producer when i produce for artists my the straight away 50 percent is mine in the prs mm -hmm. straight away 50 percent is mine and a 50 depending on who wrote the song that 50 percent goes to them yeah mm -hmm. so Normally, the performer will be the writer. They get that fifty percent. Now, if I help to co-write it with them, I I can lay claim in that second fifty percent as well. So I can say, right, I've produced a song, I've written half of the song, I've got my fifty percent straight from production, and I should be twenty-five percent for the writing. You have to actually have an agreement with the person, and you should actually have a legal document like a split sheet. Yeah. And then when you go and register that, you say, I'm I'm uh, registering for this much percentage, and this person that much percentage they have to agree yeah um and the record company can't claim anything from prs the prs is, is strictly for say that again strictly for songwriters composers and publishers mm -hmm. same with the mcps ppl is what's uh, for record companies if they have paid money yeah to use an artist for a recording budget that means they own the masters that's somewhere in the contract and now they can claim based on that. If you fund your own recording, you technically should own the masters. And so you should be able to claim for owning the masters and you should be, should be able to claim as a performer as well. Those artists that's had songs written on their behalf can claim PPL as performers, yeah? I know it's a lot. I, I'm sorry, I know it's a lot. And I'll be honest with you, it took me a while to get it myself and I've tried my best to break it down simply. So I think, unless you have any other, other any other questions, we'll leave it there. Um, there's a lot of information. Yeah, go I'm back. definitely going to watch this back. Yeah, go go back and watch it, and fly any questions at me. And uh, to be fair, you, you may not need to know all of this, but it's good to know some of it. You yeah. Know, when you get to that point and you start talking to music publishers, you you can say, okay, what what is it, what is it you think you can do for me? Mm. What's the deal? you know like is there is there an advance is there an advance um how are you going to recoup your your how are you going to recoup that advance will you be paying um what percentage are you taking yeah how are you going to recoup that advance so then they got to tell you if they're going to recoup it straight away and you won't get any royalties until they've recouped it or if they're going to straight away give you part of your 50 percent. and then where do you think you can place my music what's the probationary period did it all of this stuff so you can ask you can ask a uh, valid question that lets them know that you're not going to get mugged off that most other musicians do. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you for your time again. Next, you, week, next week we are on. What is going on? Well, next week we're looking at online distribution and releasing music, which is we're going to now look at all of the uh, distro kids, the AWOLs, uh, all the different ways that you can actually commercially release music because obviously you can just throw it up on SoundCloud and stuff. We'll look at that. We'll do comparisons of which ones people think are the best of pros and cons. And then what we'll do to finish off, there's two more to finish off the week after, we'll just talk about, okay, you've actually got to the point where you've recorded your music, you've started your branding, you've actually released music. What's next? How do you continue to maintain your momentum and have a look kind of a, a recap there? So we've got two more left. All right? Yeah. Excellent. So... Have yourself a wonderful evening and we will catch up next week. Cool. Thank you. All right. See you. See you later.